Hello everyone and welcome back! Today is a very special day because I decided to start a new nail swing series and this is going to be a series of tutorials where I show you some nail swing moves that combine the use of your footwork and some other uh, movements. Now, of course, this series isn't going to be a series for beginners because, as I already told you a million times, in order to be able to introduce your arm moves into your dance, you need to be very, very, very confident with your footwork. Okay? So, if you're interested in a series for beginners, I've already made it. You can find it on my YouTube channel in the playlist section. And so, let's get started. Now, this video is still not part of the series, but it is very important because today I will explain some concepts that you will need to know in order to understand and to follow my tutorials. Because you see, when it comes to our moves, the main problem is that even if you do just something slightly wrong, you can turn a cool looking move into a very awkward looking move, sometimes even ridiculous. So, the purpose of this video is to tell you some general guidelines, what you should do, what you should not do, to make your arm moves look better. Because, in fact, if you do things properly, you can look cool even by just lifting one arm. And I'm not kidding, let me show you an example right away. Make their bodies move, because we're gonna groove. Let's go! just lifting one arm at a time. So did you like it? Well, of course you didn't. Because, I mean, it lacked of energy, it was just bland. So let me show you the same move but done in another way. And make their bodies move, because we're gonna grow. Let's go! the same move performed in two different ways can create two completely different effects. So what did they change from the previous attempt to this attempt? Well, one of the most important things I changed is muscle tension, which is the first concept of this video. So let's talk about muscle tension a little bit. Now, as you can probably guess, by muscle tension, I mean the amount of force that you put in your muscles. So, in this case, you can clearly tell that my right leg is under tension, whereas there is not much tension in my left leg. So, why didn't I talk about muscle tension in the other tutorials about your footwork? Well, of course, muscle tension is important in your footwork, but, well, the point is that you can easily guess where the tension is. I mean, if I'm in this position, of course, my right leg is under tension because it is where I'm putting my weight. Whereas when it comes to our moves, it's not so clear what is under tension because, well, I mean, there is still gravity, but you don't really need to put a lot of tension to keep your arm in this position. In fact, right now I'm not putting much tension at all, and you can see it because if I try to put my arm down, it goes down easily. Whereas if I do this, now I'm putting tension in my arm, and you can tell because if I try to put it down, you see it doesn't want to go down. So what is muscle tension used for? Well, in arm moves, usually you want to put tension to make your position look more solid. For example, this position looks way more solid than this one. But to keep this position, you need much more tension than to keep this one. And of course, the amount of tension then that you want to put in your moves also depends on the effect that you want to create. For example, on a softer rhythm, you may want to keep your tension a bit lower to make everything look more smooth. 
Whereas on a harder beat, you may want to keep your tension a bit higher to make everything look more powerful, more full of energy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, Zank, cool. But if I want to do arm moves, what do I do? Well, fortunately, I noticed that most of the arm moves I know can be divided in two parts that I decided to call poses and linkers. Now, let me explain what I mean. Well, poses are the static part of your arm moves, so basically when you don't actually move. And they can last one instant or last longer in time. Think about what I did in my dance clip. And they always require some tension, you can choose how much. And they need to look cool. Think about when you take a photo, well, you have to pose in a cool position. Whereas linkers are the dynamic part of your uh, moves, so they are basically the movements that link one pose to the following one, and they don't require much tension at all, they basically require no tension, and they don't even need to look perfect, because they are a bit like in-between frames for an animator. So even if they are not perfect, nobody is gonna really notice. For example, if you do something like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, now this is a pose, this is another pose, and they are both instantaneous, whereas this is a linker, this movement is a linker, and this movement is also a linker. Now, of course, this concept doesn't apply to every single arm move I know. For example, if you do Svenotan Vortex, which is this one, I mean, there are technically no poses, so it is just one fluid movement, one long linker, if you want. And you can also probably make an arm move where there are no linkers, so there are just poses, and that would probably look like a robot dance. So, I mean, one, two, three, like this. Okay, now that you know about poses and linkers, let me show you how you can create an arm move. I mean an 8, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. And let's start from the poses, which should be easier. So let's say I want to do 4 instantaneous poses, 1 at the 2, 1 at the 4, 1 at the 6 and 1 at the 8. Let's start with the first one. So let's say I like this pose and so I want to use it as a 2. But I also like this pose, and that will be our 4. Then let's do something a bit more strange. So let's say we'll use this pose as 6, which also looks cool. And then let's say we want to do this pose as an 8, and we are basically done. Now let's proceed with the linkers. And when you want to create some linkers, you should always remember these two rules. Rule number one, never go for the shortest path. So if you want to go from this position to this position, don't just do this, because it's a bit too lazy. And the second rule is, circles are always great. So keeping this in mind, we need to go from this position to our two. And so we can do something like and 1 and 2, for example, and then we have to reach 4, so we can do and 3 and 4, then we have to reach 6, so from this we can do and 5 and 6, and then from 6 we have to reach 8, so we can go for something like this, and 7 and 8. And so we created an arm move, an eight. So let's repeat it. We said, and one and two, and three and four, and five and six, and seven and eight. And that's it. Now keep in mind that while you are dancing, you are also moving your feet and your legs. So don't go for something too crazy with your arms, otherwise it will be impossible to execute. And you should also keep in mind that what you do with your arms should fit well with what you do with your legs. 
so you can try to create some armors that go well with some steps that you already know but you don't really need to do it because I've done that for you since that's what my entire series is all about so I'd say that we're done for today be sure not to miss the first episode of my series and see you soon